Welcome back everybody, Canadian Silver Saver here, and I've got a fun video with some pickups from the Mississauga Coin and Stamp Show about a week ago there when I filmed this video. I've uh, just been busy getting ready for the life changes that are happening, and uh, just trying to get these videos done in a timely fashion, but I am a little bit behind. So there's lots that I've got uh, ready to come, so stay tuned for, for that as I catch up. But this, uh, let's get right to it here, and this is a, um, I'll show you here, there's four coins that I've got here, and this is part of a 24 coin series. Uh, that came out in 1991 uh, from War World War II aircrafts. This one here is the Japanese uh, aircraft featured in the series, one of them. The K161 Hein, otherwise known as the Flying Swallow or the Kawasaki K161 Hein. Um, and it was the Japanese aircraft during World War II used by the Imperial Japanese Army Air Service. Uh, the K-161 looked so different than the usual uh, Japanese fighters that the Allies actually believed it was either German or Italian originally when they saw it. They did not realize it was a Japanese plane. Look at the details in that coin though, you'll see as it's flying over the mountains there. You can see the other, the other plane down below it. Uh, looking over the scenery, there's another one kind of turning off in the background and one in the cloud behind it there. Really cool, you can kind of look at that and you can see all the detail in there. Beautiful design they've done in these coins. Um, it was the only mass-produced Japanese fighter plane to use a uh, cooled engine or a um, inline V engine, cooled engine. Over 3,000 of these were produced. Uh, initial prototypes saw action over Yokohama during the Doolittle Raid on April 18th of 1942, and it continued to fly combat missions throughout the war. Very cool plane, uh, cool coin. Now let's take a look at the back here. So these are Republic of the Marshall Islands. Uh, very nice pieces. Extremely well done in detail on both sides. Very unique. And you'll see 1991, $50 there. They are 31.1, so they are one ounce. And they are three nines pure silver tested. Uh, I haven't seen a stamp on these anywhere. So um, they are, but they have been tested that they are three nines. And you can look these up. They're pretty common out there, but uh, I've checked these out. Very cool pieces for sure. So that's the first one in the series. And uh, we'll, you know, as I'm going here, I'll try to do more little flybys and recaps here of the actual plane. So this is the Yak-9. So the Yak-9 in the series, and again, they have all have the same Marshall Islands back, but it's still such a beautiful design. It's such a well done coin on both sides, or I guess round technically. Um, but the Yak-9, $50 coin, all of these are, and you'll see the, what was the yak Ovlev, I believe, the Yak-9 was a single engine fighter aircraft used by the Soviet Union during World War II and after. Uh, fundamentally a lighter development of the Yak-7 uh, with the same armament. Uh, it arrived near the beginning of 1942. Its lighter airframe gave it, it gave the new fighter a flexibility that more flexibility than previous models. The Yak-9 was the most mass-produced Soviet fighter of all time, and it remained in production from 1942 to 1948. They made a total of 16,769, it says. Uh, total built during the war was 14,579, so there's a lot built just during the war. Following World War II, it was used by the North Korean Air Force during the Korean War. But again, you'll see here some really cool detail you can see it's done some type of, there's a, maybe an explosion or bombing that's been happening there and uh, overlooking this, the city below. Cool piece, cool coin, and uh, again, just something a little bit different. Um, I'd love to see all these coins in the series, but I only, I've only seen the, uh, the four uh, so far. Now, I've looked them up, but uh, in, in my hand. So the next one here, the SM-79 Sparviero, uh, it was actually the so Savoia Mar Marchetti SM-79 Sparviero, uh, which is Italian for Sparrowhawk. Uh, a very interesting design on this plane. And uh, Now this coin, I think, uh, not quite as much detail in it really. It's a lot more simple. You don't have much going on in the, in the, you know, the countryside below there. It's very, very far down. Minor details. The planes are well done. There's three on there. Um, they've made sure to show a few of the features uh, to really show the, the difference in this plane. But uh, it was a three engine Italian medium bomber developed and manufactured by an aviation company, uh, the Savoia Marchetti. It used to be best known, the best known Italian aeroplane of the Second World War. Uh, it was recognizable due to its distinctive fuselage dorsal hump, uh, with that little bump there underneath. Uh, 
which was something unique on that one. Uh, and it was uh, reportedly well liked by its crews. Uh, they nicknamed it the Gobo Mildetto, which is the damned hunchback. Uh, the SM79 had originally been developed during the early 1930s uh, as a low wing monoplane employing uh, wood and metal structures, really basic design. It was designed uh, with the initial intention to produce a quick eight passenger tra transport aircraft. Um, and it was capable of besting uh, similar planes at the time. Uh, however, the project quickly attracted the attention of the Italian government for its potential as an armed aircraft. And uh, the SM-79 saw its first combat during the Spanish Civil War. Um, and in, during that time, it operated without fighter escorts, normally relying on its relatively high speed to evade interception, uh, basically just a quick plane. Almost 600 SM-79 ones and two aircraft were in service when Italy entered the Second World War uh, during May 1940. Uh, the SM-79 was operated in various different capacities during the Second World War. Initially, the type used was a transport aircraft, like mentioned, and then a bomber. Uh, a specialized drone version of the aircraft flown by remote control was also developed, uh, which is quite interesting considering that was in the 1940s. Um, but the armistice with Italy was enacted prior to any operational development, so that was canned. Uh, it was the most n numerous Italian bomber of the Second World War uh, around some 1,300 of them were, con were constructed, built, and uh, they would remain in service until 1952. So there it is. Cool piece. A little bit more history on that one. It has a little bit more of a background behind it that I uh, found interesting. And now we go on to one that many, many people know. It's the Spitfire. Now the Spitfire uh, is called the sub. What's it? The submarine Spitfire uh, is the full name of it. And again, uh, unfortunately, I think this is probably the simplest design of all the coins, which really highlights. Come on, which really highlights the uh, you know the the plane itself, and it's so famous and so popular. This was actually one of the first models I ever built as a kid. Was the Spitfire, and given to me by a cousin. Uh, but the Spitfire is very very famous plane. But again, very little detail on the the countryside below, focusing mainly on the plane. Even the planes in the background don't have much detail, unfortunately. Uh, but the very famous plane, again, the same uh, Republic of the Marshall Islands on the back. And you'll see here the Spitfire $50 coin. So uh, it was the British uh, single-seat aircraft uh, used by the Royal Air Force and other Allied countries uh, before, during, and also after World War II. A very, very popular plane and continued on for a long time. Uh, there are many variants of the Spitfire with different wing configurations. Uh, just depending on kind of what they were uh, being used for. What you see here is the most uh, commonly reproduced or, or, or you see it shows in that. Um, it was produced in greater numbers than any other British aircraft was and also the only British fighter produced continuously throughout the war. Uh, which is, you know, all the way through. It was pretty cool to think it was there before and after. Uh, a lot of history behind that for sure. The Spitfire continues to be popular among enthusiasts, and there's actually about 60 of these around the world that are airworthy and still being flown today for shows. Uh, and there's many more in exhibits and aviation museums and that around the world, of course, too, which uh, is where I've seen them. Um, after the Battle of Britain, the Spitfire superseded the Hurricane to become the backbone of the RAF Fighter Command, and it saw action in the European, Mediterranean, Pacific, and Southeast Asian Wars or theaters is what's uh, written, but uh, yeah, battles. Uh, much loved by its pilots, the Spitfire served in several roles, including interceptor, photo reconnaissance, fighter bomber, and trainer, and continued to serve in these roles until the 1950s. Awesome. There you go, everybody. Uh, some four really cool coins here. Something a little bit different to share and a little bit of history on uh, on what's on the coins as well. So we're not just talking about the, the silver itself, which we all love, of course. There's nothing wrong with just talking about the silver. Um, but these are f four coins that if you were to pick something up like this and give this to your, your children or grandkids or nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, whoever it may be, this is a great way to help people get into investments and also, uh, you know, if they're into airplanes or they're a veteran or they've they love uh, they, they're a pilot. They've been in. They've served in the war. 
uh, or in any, any any capacity. I think this is a great way to uh, honor that, kind of touch on something that they that is close to them as well, while also uh, helping people learn about investments because it sparks that conversation. So it's like, oh, that's cool, that's a coin. Oh yes, but this is pure silver, and uh, let's talk about that, right? So cool pieces here. I hope you enjoyed that feature. Something a little bit different to highlight today. I've got more features coming up from the that I picked up at the Mississauga Coin and Stamp Show, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to try and get a couple videos up in a couple days here. And uh, if you have any questions, send, send them to me. Make some comments down below. Hit that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, if you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. And thanks for hanging out, everybody. Stay tuned, and we will talk to you all soon.